Aaron, and this is Colleen, and we are two of the zookeepers here at the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden. Welcome to our home safari. And this is Lucille the Big Girl. Now, we're going to be feeding Lucille, doing a little bit of training today. And uh, in addition to that, we're going to be telling you all about this incredible animal. And at the end, we're going to have a special activity for you guys to do as well. Yeah, and if you guys have any questions, please just start sending them in, and we're going to try our best to get to as many as we can. And also, if you can, comment where you guys are um, watching from. We'd love to see how many people are reaching all over the world with this home safari. So the main event here is Lucille. Now, we're going to call her a couple different kinds of animals as this uh, Facebook Live experience happens. She is known as a binturong as well as a bear cat. And we've actually had her since she was about one month old. She came to us from the Nashville Zoo when she was very small, and we actually finished raising her. You guys might notice some fun bubbles appearing in, uh, in Lucille's space. We actually just introduced her to bubbles yesterday, and she is not sure what to make of them. I think she likes them as much as I do. Lucille came to the zoo for a very special reason, and that's also the reason why Colleen and I are not in uniform today. Yeah, you guys might notice if you look really closely at Lucille's collar, she's wearing a University of Cincinnati Bearcat collar, and there was a Bearcat blanket hanging, and Erin and I are both wearing Bearcat shirts. And that is because Lucille came to our zoo to be an ambassador and go to all the different UC sporting events. So we take Lucille to basketball games and football games and baseball games so that she can be an ambassador for her species, and she can help to get the crowd really, really wild and, and ready to go for the game. Now we've already got one question that I'm going to address right up front. Why is this animal called a bear cat? And I think as you guys look at her, you might be able to observe the reasons why they're called that. Bear cats have faces and whiskers that look a little bit like a cat. She's got those very long whiskers and they're very good climbers just like cats. And then they have the body that almost looks like a bear except they have that nice, long, prehensile tail. So I think if I were to get to rename bear cats, I would call them bear cat monkeys. The funny thing about them is that they are not bears or cats or monkeys. They're actually belonging to a family called civets, or they're related to things called civets, and they're their only animal. Colleen, where can we find these guys in the world? Yeah, so Lucille is specially called a Palawan binturong. So there are all sorts of different subspecies of binturong. Some say six, some say nine, but Lucille is a Palawan binturong. So she is specifically from the Palawan Island, which is part of the Philippines. So Southeast Asia, think Asia, other side of the world. That's where we're going to find animals related to Lucille. And as you guys can see, Lucille is very curious and she does a lot of playing. Um, we also have all sorts of fun toys and uh, other enrichment items for her to hang around with today. She's still a very young animal and she's extremely curious and playful, which is one of the reasons why we love her so much. <laughs> Yeah, so we actually just got a really fun question from Zoe. Zoe, thank you for your question. She wanted to know why are their whiskers so long? And I think that's an excellent question because if you guys have noticed as we've been up close with Lucille, she does have some crazy long whiskers. And that is because these guys are primarily nocturnal. And if you know what nocturnal means, it means that you are out and about when it is super dark and nighttime. So Lucille uses those whiskers to help her feel around the forest and up in the trees where she lives because she's an arboreal animal, which means living in the trees. So it helps her find it. <laughs> she just tried to take the camera. <laughs> In party foul, Lucille. <laughs> anyway, the whiskers help her navigate the forest where she lives. I think we have another question from Elliot. Are um, all bear cats black? Now, actually, this is something that's it's pretty cool about Lucille, especially. She's actually the blondest bear cat that we've ever seen. And we've talked to a lot of other zookeepers at other zoos who have taken care of bear cats, and she's actually the lightest in color that we've seen. In general, though, bear cats are all black fur. 
Um, and, and even where you guys see this kind of blondish, brownish fur, they're all black except for those white, white whiskers and sometimes those white markings on their ears. We got another really fun question that I like to talk about from Maggie. So Maggie wants to know, do bear cats live in groups? And actually, Maggie, I want you to know that bear cats are solitary animals primarily. However, they do come together once in a while. Mom and dad will come together to start a family. And they will usually have one to three babies. And then those babies are going to stay with mom for a little while so that she can raise them and help them grow up. Now, as Lucille is wandering around, I talked about this just a minute ago, but she has this really nice, long, strong tail. And that tail is prehensile. She uses it like a lot of monkeys do, and she uses it to climb. So you guys can see her wrapping that tail around those branches and even supporting her weight with it. Um, it is incredibly strong and powerful, and she has been learning how to use it since she was very, very small. In fact, one of the fun things we got to do with her when she was really little was we were the ones who got to teach her how to fly. Are you coming all the way down? No, you're just going to hang out halfway. So bear cats are an arboreal species. These guys love to live up in trees, and for that reason, she feels the safest when she is up on one of her zookeepers. Just like you and me, it takes a lot of practice to learn how to be a bear cat and to learn how to do anything very well. And so not only am I learning how to handle Lucille and keep her happy and healthy and safe here at the zoo, she's also <laughs> learning how to climb on me. So we're gonna get her down to the ground and let her start running around a little bit. Now she is, like I said, very young and still learning. She actually has some growing left to do. She is about, how much did she weigh yesterday, call me? Yesterday she weighed 16.33 pounds. She is getting pretty big. <laughs> Lucio is very fast. She likes to run around. She's very, very playful. So you guys might see her come in and out of the camera as she's running, playing with toys, and even chasing us as we're talking. And it takes a family to raise a bear cat, so we actually have several zookeepers who helped take care of her when she was little, and they're the ones that she feels most comfortable hanging out with. Um, since they're the ones who've been around since she was very uh, teeny tiny. Yeah, so I got a question just a minute ago from Abby and Ashley, and then also one from Lyndon that all seem to be kind of related. So Lyndon asked why I am wearing gloves right now, and Abby and Ashley want to know what Lucille and their cats in general like to eat. So I'll show you guys. I'm feeding her some slimy, mushed up bananas right now. We'll see if she'll take them or she's too busy playing. Sometimes she just likes to play while she's eating. Um, so she's eating some mushed up bananas right now. We found that's one of Lucille's favorite foods because in the wild, these bear cats are going to eat a lot of fruit. That's going to be the main thing they eat. It's all different kinds of fruits. They also really like figs. Sometimes they'll eat eggs. Once in a while, they'll eat small mammals and small birds. So they are omnivores. They eat both veggies and meat and fruit. And I am wearing gloves right now just because I want to make sure I don't get any of my germs on Lucille as we're all trying to be so careful to stay home and stay healthy right now. Some of Lucille's other favorite treats um, include, she's got kind of a sweet tooth, so she definitely loves things like apple and her banana, as you can see. We've given her um, things like pear-flavored baby food. Um, Let's see, sweet potato baby food. Sweet potato baby food is a big favorite. Um, and then she also loves hard-boiled eggs. And she actually eats the eggs um, with the shell on, which is pretty silly to see. I think I brought one with me, actually. Hey, Lucia, would you like to show them? Are you an egg? She's like, hold on, there's so many things to explore. There we go, kiddo. Mm -hmm. Whenever I meet a new animal, Not today. I like to take a look at its face to get a good look at what sense I think it uses the most. Now, when I was here with you guys last week and Rico the porcupine, Rico has 
a big giant nose and teeny tiny little eyes and pretty small little ears. Um, now Lucille has pretty big ears and she's got a nice long pointy nose and all those whiskers and she also has teeny tiny eyes. Teeny tiny eyes. Yeah, so that usually tells me what, an what sense senses the animal uses the most. So I think with Lucille, her eyesight is not very good, but her sense of smell is excellent. Oh, no thank you to Hard Boiled Egg no today. No thank you today, but once in a while she just doesn't feel like eating it. But that's okay. That's okay. That's why variety is important. It's nice to eat different things every day, as we yeah. omnivores do. Yeah, so you were saying, Erin, she's got those teeny eyes. She's got those teeny eyes. She does not use those. She's been sniffing around this entire time, so she definitely uses that nose a whole lot. And, uh, and those ears that stick out nice at the side, she definitely uses those um, to hear very well. Ashlyn has asked if she has a favorite toy, Pauline. Does she have a favorite toy? Let me, actually, she's gonna show you. She went straight to it. <laughs> so that University of Cincinnati Bearcat pillow seems to be Lucille's favorite toy. Um, she likes to snuggle with it. When she was really little, she would sleep on top of it and she plays with it. And sometimes she carries it around her enclosure um, and she does lots of fun stuff with it. If you guys have any cats at home, you know that sometimes they'll need pillows and blankies where they kind of do the stuffing back and forth. She does that on her pillow too. And she purrs and just purrs and purrs when she plays with her pillow. Because, fun fact, bear cats make a lot of noises. Lucille is always talking to us. She's going to be quiet right now because she's busy playing. But when she wants her, our attention, boy does she yell and tell us. Now we've been working with Lucille since she came to the Cincinnati Zoo when she was about one month old. And that involved um, a lot of work calling. We were with her 24 hours a day for a couple days. And then after that, we were um, with her every couple hours for most of the day. Thankfully, she's a really good sleeper. So after the first week or so, she was sleeping through the night and we did not have to be with her. But we were the ones who weaned her off her milk and introduced her to solid food and got her used to all sorts of sights and sounds. Since she is an ambassador to the University of Cincinnati, we have been also getting her used to the sights and sounds of the stadium. And Colleen can tell you a little bit about what went into that work. Yeah, so that was super fun training. Something I haven't actually gotten to do before is teaching an animal how to go to basketball games. Kind of a crazy thing. So what we started by doing is we would take Lucille just in her crate, which is kind of like an animal's car, and we would take her to those basketball to the basketball stadium and just let her sniff it out and get used to the atmosphere of the stadium. And then every time we would go to the stadium, we would add something new and exciting and maybe even a little bit scary. So sometimes it was bouncing a basketball. Sometimes it was cheerleaders doing flips in the air, and sometimes it was the loud music or the videos on the Jumbotron. And Lucille was a champ. She moved forward in her training faster than we could have ever imagined or hoped that she would. So Lucille, this season, got to go to several basketball games when we weren't actually sure when we started her training if she was going to make it to one or not this season. Here's Lucille playing with a tunnel <laughs> that is probably too small for her, but she doesn't know that. One of the things I like best about her is how curious she is. She really explores the world and doesn't seem to be afraid of too many things. And I think that that is what I admire about her the most. Yes, she teaches us to be brave every she single day. She absolutely does. Um, one of the questions we got is, does she have a favorite keeper? That is a question that Colleen and I might fight about later. I would say no. I'm going to say no. I think that she actually loves us all fairly equally. Um, the important thing with Bearcats is, um, <laughs> is good consistency, which means that she has to expect the same things from us every single day. She has a very strict routine. And even though we do fun things like come out to exercise, she knows that she can expect her breakfast at a certain time and her dinner at a certain time, and she can expect us to come in and work on her training at a certain time as well. Um, routine is really important to these guys, and so as long as her keepers follow the routine, 
and, um, and all act the same around her, then she is a very happy uh, bear cat. We put some live crickets over here into one of these pools, and we'll see if she wants to come play. In general, Lucille seems to like to be wherever we are, and we'll see if she wants to come tackle this in a second. And in the meantime, we got a really fun question asking why Lucille's tail curls, and I think that is such a fun question because her curly tail has to be one of the top five cutest things about the way Lucille looks. Now, my theory is that curly tail is because it is so long. It is so long, she has to make sure it doesn't drag on the ground and get dirty or get caught on things. So if she can curl it up like that, it's a way that she can walk around and have it hang behind her without causing any problems. So here she is digging around in a mulch bin. Now this is, a, this is actually an extra enriching experience because we let some other animals dig around in here as well. And so Lucille is probably smelling some of the other animals that we take care of here at the Cincinnati Zoo. I think that house is too small for you, Lucille. I'm not sure. She also has mulch tubs in her house for enrichment sometimes, so just for fun, for digging in. So she might just see it as something kind of familiar. Exactly. Does she make noises? So Lucille is not really making any noises right now unless you guys can pick up a little bit of her super loud sniffing. But as I mentioned just a little bit ago, Lucille does make some crazy noises. So when she's really happy, she's actually gonna purr, which is another reason people probably called them bear cats when they first got named. And she also will growl if she's not happy and she will yell sometimes. And if we walk in the building and she wants our attention, she will let us know by yelling to us and calling to us. Now, Kara asked, is she litter box trained? That was a perfectly timed question <laughs> since I just mentioned them being like cats. Actually, Lucille is litter box trained. So she goes in a box um, that has wood shavings in it. So not, not normal cat litter that you might have at home for your cats, but Lucille goes in wood shavings. And it's really nice. It makes it really easy to clean up after her. So they are pretty clean animals. But one fun, crazy, crazy fact that I can't believe we haven't mentioned yet that has to do with that litter box. You guys might not know, but bear cats smell like popcorn. <laughs> what? I'm not even kidding. They smell like buttered popcorn. But you mostly smell it when you're cleaning the litter box. Now, that sounds pretty gross, and it feels very weird when I'm cleaning <laughs> the litter box, and I'm like, oh, it smells like popcorn. That's kind of, oh, gosh, that's her litter box that I'm <laughs> smelling. But it is a crazy fact. and one of the most fun things about bear cats. So I'm hoping that you guys have learned a little bit about our bear cat today and bear cats in general. And we have a challenge for you. Now, the information is going to go up on the Cincinnati Zoo website in a little bit, but here's the gist of it. Bear cats are neither bears nor cats. They're a fun combination of both, even though they're not related to either. I wonder if you guys can come up with different animal combinations and create them, either by drawing them or putting them together with whatever materials you might have around the house. Now, um, if you do that, you can send them into the Cincinnati Zoo and we will show them to Lucille and see which one she loves. Oh, there she is being cute. Uh, <laughs> she's having a little bit of a bath getting that head clean. Uh, <laughs> and I think that we're not going to be able to get anything better than that, so we are probably going to wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Happy birthday, Dad. And uh, we will see you tomorrow at 3 p.m., same time, same place. Yeah, remember to tune in every day for our Cincinnati Zoo Home Safari.